Department, one of the last departments in our North State implementing body cameras, finally putting them into action. Years after funding was received, just days after a shocking arrest video went viral. Plus reaction from Shasta County DA and PG&E, a judge issuing a holding order for the utility to go to trial over allegations it was reckless and negligent in starting his own fire. All that more starts right now. This is KRZR News Channel 7 at 6.30, the North States News. Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight on the North States News at 6.30. I'm Dylan Brown. Well, RPD, one of the last police departments in the North State to introduce body cameras. The department was first given money by the city for cameras in 2015. Program never launched. I want to warn you, though, the video we're about to show you of the incident last month, it can be disturbing for some. That incident under investigation as, of course, the department rolls out their new attempt at transparency. Oh, the cop kicked him in the face. This video taken on January 23rd shows Redding police officers arresting 39 year old Kevin Donald Hersey. The video shows one officer stomping on Hersey's head multiple times. It soon spread across social media. A week after the incident and the video was shared, Police Chief Bill Schuler posted a statement online saying, quote, some of the force used is disturbing and may violate the standards of training and conduct required by the members of the Reading Police Department. You know, I understand the public's concern, but uh, the public needs to know that I'm doing everything I can within, um, within the law to uh, address this issue. This incident has sparked conversations about excessive force and the importance of body cameras, as RPD is one of the few North State Police units that have yet to fully introduce body cameras. However, on Tuesday, just one day after the chief statement, RPD rolled out their first trial run cameras. The city of Reading approved the funding last year, and the department has been working on the logistics around the cameras since that time. But the public has been calling for the equipment for years. So I want to know why now? Why is Reading Police Department one of the last units to get these body cameras? It all comes down to cost and staffing. So it, it took us a while to get there. And frankly, the council has prioritized staffing because we lost so much staffing in 2008. That was the priority. It was my priority to get more people here. And the body cameras, although important, were, taking, were secondary to that. However, smaller police departments like Red Bluff and Corning have had body cameras for years. Tehama County District Attorney Matt Rogers says body camera footage helps them find the truth in the courtroom. We have a really good idea of what actually happened because that's, that's our goal is to get to the truth. There can be no justice without truth. According to research done by the University of Chicago Crime Lab, use of force by police departments who implemented the cameras dropped almost 10 percent and complaints against officers also dropped 17 percent. Roger says he's noticed this locally, too, as people are going to act differently when they know they're being filmed. The camera footage, I think, has decreased the number of police complaints, um, complaints against police, I mm -hmm. should say, and I think that um, it also has reduced the number of excessive force allegations that we see when a case comes to court. In light of the RPD footage and the Tyree Nichols case, some Reading residents plan the protest for Thursday afternoon. Nathan Blaze is one of the organizers of the protest. He says you can back the blue while also wanting to hold them accountable. But you have to also see when they're doing something wrong because that's part of, I believe that should be part of backing the blue. If the goal of back the blue is to have a good set of law enforcement that you trust and respect, you have to hold them accountable so they can be good law enforcement. Police need to be held accountable. We need police for law and order. We just need ones that are willing to to, you know, de-escalate. Chief Schuler says he's excited to get the body cameras fully rolled out after the trial runs as they benefit their department, the public, and keep everyone accountable. It's just another piece of, as I talked about, evidence it shows what happened out in the field. It shows those conversations that officers have with the public. Uh, it's a good community service tool. Um, it, uh, it keeps everybody honest, I guess you could say. Reporting in Reading, Mason Carroll, The North States News. In Chief Schuller's statement about the video, he says the Anderson Police Department will be uh, conduct a separate independent criminal investigation into the officer's actions. There are ties between the two departments, so we also sat down with APD Police Chief to talk about how they'll be conducting the investigation. We'll be having that story tomorrow. And speaking of, let's look alive now and happening now. This is the scene outside of Reading City Hall. What was people gathering there tonight for a what they called a peaceful protest Hours ago, they've changed it to say it is a RPD body camera celebration.
That's what they've said out there. This is the community's response, of course, after the spread of that video of an RPD officer forcefully stepping on the head of a suspect during an arrest. That was the statement from RPD themselves on this matter. The organizers say this protest intends to, or this uh, celebration intends to be peaceful, demanding that police in Reading continue to uh, wear and use body cameras for the protection of everyone. We're going to have live looks at this throughout the 7 at 7 as well. And staying in Reading, let's take a live look over Reading downtown from our house. We launched Sky Cam. Guess what? The groundhog saw his shadow. That's right. We're in for six more weeks of winter. We've got clouds rolling in. Some's coming along with them, too. We've got someone better than a groundhog, someone with a degree <laughs> in meteorology. We've got first alert meteorologist Brian Schofield tracking that and more. What you seeing, Brian? With just as much hair as a groundhog. Now, I, know, I, yeah, just didn't, I didn't say that. No, I, I said that. it. I mean, say, <laughs> just, just as much as that. That's the only similarity. And the teeth, maybe. All right, uh, 50 in Red Bluff right now, 48 Corning, 50 in Willows. Looking good, feeling good. Where's the wind, you might be asking? Well, we're not forecasting the strongest winds for us along the coast, and they've been seeing some today. It's been on again, off again. But that front is still poised to move on through. It's not quite in yet. We've been getting clouds streaming on, and you've seen those throughout the day. Rainfall, we're not expecting anything tonight. We're really expecting it uh, by early, early tomorrow morning. We're talking like 4 a.m. Here it comes. That's the system right there. And then the one backed in behind this actually has more kick. Hard to believe, right? There's the next one in, but the next one brings us a winter storm watch. So things are getting very interesting. I guess that rodent uh, did really well this time around. <laughs> we got some stuff going on uh, above the 4,000 foot level could get up to a foot almost uh, two feet or even beyond that above the 6,000 foot level with some stronger wind on the way. But we'll get the timing down of both systems coming up in your first alert forecast just ahead. All right, sounds like a plan. We'll come back to you, Brian. An attempted homicide in Trinity County last night left a person in critical condition. Another arrested. The suspect per Trinity County Sheriff's Office, one Aaron Lewandowski. They say he allegedly stabbed an individual in Hayfork after a fight. Lewandowski running away. He wouldn't be found until before noon today, taken to the hospital in a helicopter, air flighted. Someone we spoke with said the fast response time by authorities comforted them. It is pretty dang fast. I saw they had CHP, local sheriff, and um, uh, Forest Service sheriff. All of them are out there. I saw over eight vehicles yesterday when I went through it. Also, I end up feeling safe no matter what. I also interviewed Trinity Sheriff Timothy Saxon. Uh, the effort it took to find Lewandowski. What happened hour by hour? That's coming up tonight at 10 on Fox 11 on ABC. Coming up, PG&E held to answer for several charges stemming from the Zong fire, including manslaughter. We're hearing from the Shasta County DA and the company. That's next. The time right now, 636. I'm Dylan Brown. This is your North State News. Your victim, you could end up getting a $50 gift card for the Butte Fire Safe Council for participating in this study on, on wildfire recovery. Researchers from the University of North Texas conducting a study what exactly wildfire recovery looks like, specifically for wildfire victims in Butte, Sonoma, and Lake Counties. Researchers have already finished the first round of the study, 20 to 30 participants, but they're looking for more to participate. So it's going to be tomorrow at the Butte Fire Safe Council. It's going to start at 4 in the afternoon. We spoke to a Fire Safe Council official earlier today about it. They're really just hoping the folks from the community will show up who are interested in participating. And so it's a really great opportunity and there are so many people who have a story to share and you know, who would like to take some photos and put those into part of this research log that's being built. To find out where you can participate, head to krcrtv.com. Well, PG&E will be held to answer on multiple felony and misdemeanor accounts, including manslaughter for its role in setting the Zonk fire in 2020. We told you about that last night. Tonight, though, the reaction from Shasta County District Attorney and the utility company itself. Mike Mangus has the story. Four people were killed in the Zog fire in the Igo Ono area west of Redding. It burned more than 56,000 acres and destroyed more than 200 structures. PG&E acknowledges its equipment started the fire, but denies the district attorney's allegations that it operates in a reckless and negligent manner. From the beginning, we've known we have a strong case and we are prepared to take it all the way to trial if that's, that's, what, that's what we need to do. Um, it's unacceptable, the conduct that uh, PG&E has been engaged in and in our community. It costs four people their lives. Um, so we are committed to going all the way and doing what we can to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Arraignment is set for February 15th. 
PG&E issued this statement following the judge issuing a holding order to the utility. The loss of life and impact to the communities affected by the Zog fire is tragic. We continue our work to make it safe and make it right, both by resolving claims from past fires and through our work to make our system safer every day. We agree with the court's decision to dismiss 20 of the 31 counts charged, including all 10 air contaminant charges as well as all charges relating to other fires in Shasta County. As we have stated previously, we accept CAL FIRE's determination that a tree falling into our power line caused the 2020 Zog fire. However, we believe PG&E did not commit any crimes. We believe the conduct of our co-workers and contractors reflects good faith judgment by qualified individuals, and we will continue to defend against these charges as the proceeding unfolds. But District Attorney Bridget says a settlement is always a possibility. Do you see this at all, any kind of a settlement, or is this just going to a trial? In any case, there's always um, an opportunity for settlement. We continue to talk with um, defense counsel, whether it's a case against PG&E or whether it's a, you know, a case of a, something stolen out of a store. We are always open to the opportunity that a case could settle. Um, however, we're also prepared to go to trial. Would that be very likely? That was Mike Megas reporting. She says it's really hard to predict exactly how strong a possibility uh, the possibility is of a settlement. Clouds on the increase. That's what we've seen throughout the afternoon. More on the way breezy days ahead. But of course, we're going to intersperse that with some rain, some mountain snow. Friday through the weekend, we'll get the timing down for you coming up in your first alert forecast just ahead. Thank you, guys. All right, we are looking back now live outside of Reading City Hall. People gathering there tonight for a celebration of Reading Police uh, announcing the implementation of those body cameras. Uh, a good group out there tonight in the storm at just around 6, I say about 6.15. We had Anna Montemore make her way out there around 5.30, 5.45. Not too many folks. They've got signs out there. It sounds like somebody is speaking. Do we have sound at all? If, if we do, let's, let's listen in. I don't get to get out as much to things like this, and I'm so happy that I get, I get to be here for what we're calling a celebration, and I'm proud of all the work that you guys have done over the last couple of years in this community. Um, Monique, um, where, oh, Nate, there's Nate, Lisa, Marv, you guys. All right, she kind of mentioned it right off the top there of how they changed it into a celebration after that announcement. Um, again, this started around six or so in reaction to the uh, uh, video we've played for you again and again of what's looked like an officer stepping on the head uh, of an individual uh, last week. We'll continue to distract this. Uh, take another live look at her in the 7 at 7. It's going to be here on the 7 at 7. We'll have more for you then. Well, the Shasta Trinity National Forest conducting prescribed burns in the Green Mountain area north of Redding, the east side of Shasta Lake. It's all part of the Green Mountain Project. Or State's News, Tyler Van Dyke was out there firsthand to capture it. It's a prescribed burn, and I think that's a real important part. Um, it's a prescription like you get from a doctor's office. There's a lot of preparation and planning that goes into these uh, efforts. Prescribed burns like this help to reduce the impacts of potential large wildfires. The Shasta Trinity National Forest Service started doing prescribed burning in the Green Mountain area on Wednesday and continued Thursday. Public Information Officer Mark Thibodeau describes the resources that go into this. Uh, we use helicopters, we use leaf blowers, chainsaws, we have um, fire engines, helico uh, helicopters, and uh, fire personnel, hand crews, hot shots from the MODOC and the Shasta Trinity and the Klamath National Forest. Fire planner Stephen Clark says it will cover an expansive area. It's approximately 5,070 acres split up in four units. Yesterday they came out in black line to unit L, the northernmost unit, to prep for aerial ignition today. So with the aerial ignition today, they plan on burning 4,700 acres. Do talks about what kind of efforts go into prepping for the project. Some of those would be the weather, the uh, fuel moisture, uh, the moisture that's within the uh, sticks and the leaves that we have on the ground. And, um, you know, all those, uh, the, the long-term weather forecast, the short-term weather forecast, all these things combine to give us the fire effects or the fire behavior that will uh, contribute to a healthier environment. He also says there are several goals they want to meet 
with the controlled burns. One of them is to uh, restore the forest to be a healthier environment, uh, not only for the wildlife out here, but also to uh, minimize the impacts from potentially large wildfires in the future by reducing the fuels and making a healthy forest. Communications manager for California Deer Association, Sharice McDougall, says they love partnering with the Forest Service. It's just so great to have a partner who's so ambitious to keep communities safe and do what it takes to put good fire on the ground. And that was Tyler Van Dyke reporting. Let's take a time lapse look at Mount Lassen for PG&E's Tuska Butte camera. We've had, had a kind of a break from the rain, not from those clouds, but we're in for something here in a bit. Let's get over to first. Let me draw this. Brian Schofield tracking that and more. Good evening, Brian. All right, thank you, Dylan. Yeah, a lot of you might sleep through it uh, for tomorrow morning. That's when we're going to see the earliest bout with it. And then we have some more over the weekend, but we'll narrow down the timing for you. 49 right now. Uh, pretty nice at the sundial, so we're looking good. Feeling good, too. Clouds on the increase. Wind, not on the increase for us yet. That's more of a tomorrow event for us. But for the coast, they've been seeing those kind of uh, areas where we're seeing pockets of stronger wind as this system comes ashore. Taking its time. They get it first. They get it tonight. We do not. Uh, actually, the bulk of this continues to move to the north. Uh, a lot of this energy will be out of the way, but that doesn't stop the front from pushing on in. That's what we're going to see out of the bargain. It's going to lift the air. It's going to cool and condense and then showers form. And maybe by the weekend, we might even see a thunder boomer or two. It's not out of the realm of possibilities in the upper elevations, but precision cast pushes this in by 11 p.m. for Eureka for really uh, Humboldt County, at least coastal Humboldt. And then right here by about 4 a.m., that's when we start to get the first effects of it. Uh, upper elevations start to get some snow out of the bargain. We get some rain. Well, once again, we're not talking heavy duty rain, but there might be a little heavy at times, some bouts with it. But all told, it won't be the biggest system we've had come through. And then it pushes out pretty well, pretty quickly, but we still have the lingering effects of it. But by the latter half of the day, we're done with it, long done with it. And we're just kind of wading through to Saturday, which we start off the morning dry Saturday as well. And then we push the next system in, which is more of a Saturday evening event for us. But watch how it all coalesces. Watch this. Bam, right there. So it doesn't take long. Once it gets going across the area, it sticks around through early Sunday morning. As you can see there, the time frame under the word precision cast right there. 7 a.m. We're still kind of dealing with some spotty showers here and there. And then by Sunday evening, it's long gone and done as well. So isn't that interesting? So we get half a day almost each day. So uh, the setup is this. You got uh, some rainfall estimates. We throw maybe a quarter of an inch on average across the area. That's through early Saturday. So that's one system worth. Then we add the second one in, and that's when they start to get a little more impressive. This one, uh, the next one, has a lot more kick to it and uh, certainly some more energy and more moisture enough to be wrung out in the mountains. So that's what we're going to be watching. How much can we get in the local mountains? And you saw earlier, we're talking maybe upwards of a foot or two in the highest elevation. So yeah, that one has some good kick to it. Either way, uh, you got those overnight lows that are still on the cool side. Not as chilly as this morning. This morning in Reading, we were right about 30 degrees. Be 39 for tonight. Adding some cloud cover in, getting us a chance for showers, keeping those breezes in. Morning showers, evening showers on Saturday. A little difference there, you see that? And then we deal with 40s for overnight lows and uh, for uh, 50s for afternoon highs, but soon to be 60s. I'm just looking down the alley there and I see those 60s and that's what gets me a little hyped up there too, just to keep things on the mild side. Still, we'll have to grab a jacket because that's your peak temperature of the day. So, you know, most of the day will be in the 50s. But once again, getting some breezes in for tomorrow. We start off the morning wet. We don't end off Friday wet. We start off uh, uh, pretty dry for Saturday, but we do end off the day kind of wet as well. And uh, by Sunday morning, we still have a little lingering showers. And then the rest of Sunday, we're OK. And here is your weather window. Weather Window, presented by the National Weather Desk. The ice storm has passed, but the damage remains. This massive oak tree split in half under the weight of the ice. In Arkansas, another tree toppled into power lines. Even basketball hoops suffered in the ice. Some good news, the ice gave folks a break from the pollen coming from cedar trees. And with temperatures now above freezing, melting is underway. Want to see your weather photos and videos on TV? Click Chime In on this station's website to share. dollars given out in paycheck protection loans. About 10% or 80 billion is believed to go to people who didn't qualify but got it anyway. Sinclair National Correspondent Christine Frizzell has more. She was a model, an actress, not to mention a former Olympic speed skater. But Allison Baver was also charged with making false statements to a bank and money laundering to the tune of $10 million to help with payroll for hundreds of employees she didn't have. 
Armani Miller, Brian Abraham, and Angel Cabrera may not be famous, but they were captured on camera. This security camera footage shows them withdrawing unemployment insurance money they fraudulently obtained, along with others later posting about it on social media. These are just a few examples of fraud discovered by the Department of Justice. Lawmakers on Capitol Hill are now investigating. We owe it to the American people to get to the bottom of the greatest theft of American taxpayer dollars in history. It started with the COVID pandemic and businesses shuttered, an economy on the brink, and Congress passing multiple rounds of relief in the form of federal programs government watchdogs say lacked any oversight. The proper things need to be put in place before $1 is even sent out of the U.S. Treasury. Congress didn't do that. They were quick to spend this money because they wanted to get it into the economy. And that's when you have waste, fraud, and abuse. An Orange County, California man was approved for $5 million in PPP loans he used to buy a Ferrari, a Bentley, and a Lamborghini, later seized by the government. And the list goes on. Not only have we found about 70,000 people who put fake Social Security numbers down, we have foreigners who have also done this as well that may never be caught. We also have dead people. While the vast majority of aid did go to those who needed help keeping their businesses afloat or to pay bills while they were unemployed, government watchdogs say we may never know the true dollar amount of what was improperly paid, now calling for far more oversight from Congress. I'm Christine Frizzau reporting. See in the raindrops fall. What, do you, what time yeah, do you think? Tomorrow morning for sure. Morning. And uh, it won't last long, but when they do, they get them. Uh, this graph is showing them kind of lingering here and there, but really the latter half of the day, things will wound down pretty nicely. Okay, we'll be prepared for it. And uh, we're taking leaving you with a live look. The protest, Reading City Hall. We're going to take another one during this 7 at 7, bring you more info. Stick with us. We appreciate it. Next on the 7 at 7, a Sacramento man on trial for shooting two people. Two years ago, the victim's family's looking for closure, what they could end up getting. And in our cover story of the night, is health care too expensive? New studies show people are ignoring their medical needs due to the lack of financial stability. How to get the help you need. Plus, a plan for new living spaces has locals up in arms. Why people are concerned. All that and more starts right now. This is the 7 at 7 on KRCR, the North State's News. Well, good evening. Welcome to the 7 at 7. I'm Dylan Brown. The victims of the Lakehead shooting that happened back in 2021, hoping for answers and closure. The suspect in the shooting that left two hospitalized heading to trial today. That's where we start with our top seven stories of the night. Officials say 21-year-old stylist Matthew Hesselberg of Sacramento, the suspect for the double shooting at the Salt Creek boat ramp in April of 2021. Detectives say Hesselberg approached the victims, quote, for no apparent reason, and called one of them a racial slur before pulling out a handgun and shooting them both. Both victims survived but suffered injuries and today gathered at the Reading Courthouse as the trial began. It's been difficult. Um, de definitely can't prepare for what uh, a day like today is going to be like. It was harder than I thought, um, but everybody's doing really good, and um, we're we're getting through it. I see a lot of strength in there, and so that but, like changes the dynamic in the room. This has not been forgotten, and um, it you know the reason that we're here today is for justice. Turner added that the family hopes to see a max sentence for the 21 year old suspect if he is convicted today, day one of the trial, and it's expected to continue into next week. Reading locals are coming together Thursday night to protest against the Reading Police Department, demanding more body cameras and emphasizing why they feel that it should be required for all cops. The protest began at 6 p.m. on Thursday night and after the spread of a recent video of an RPD officer, quote, forcefully stepping on the head of a suspect, according to RPD. Afterwards, this protest was organized. The protest intends to peacefully demand the police of Reading be required by law to wear body cams for the protection of everyone. But it's it's cops hurting people, you know. Uh, there was the Tyree Nichols situation where five black cops beat him to death, you know, and then this situation is all white cops beating a white man to death, you know, so it's a 
kind of kills the whole argument that it's just one you know type of people being hurt by cops. It's it's all of us, and they need they need to stop hurting us. They're supposed to protect us. Now RPD has began a trial run of eight body cameras this week, and the chief of police, Bill Schuler, told KRCR that he hopes to have full body cameras implemented into the field before July 1st. Reporting in Reading, Anna Montemore, the North State's News. You know, the man crushed by a vehicle in southwestern Shasta County that we told you about was an on-duty PG&E employee. This happened Tuesday afternoon in the Platina area on Harrison Gulch Road. CHP says a vehicle on a jack crushed 21-year-old Jacob Lewis Stockton, a Reading man, while he's trying to change the tire. The jack officially breaking and falling, the vehicle falling down. PG&E released in a statement saying, quote, We have learned of the tragic death Tuesday of a PG&E employee in Shasta County. Our thoughts and prayers are with our fallen team member, his family, and our extended team. We are supporting the California Highway Patrol as they investigate what happened. The Chico City Council has already approved a major residential development project in eastern Chico, but that hasn't stopped some locals from fighting to stop it. Valley's Edge is poised to be a nearly 1,500-acre project that includes massive developments in eastern Chico between Skyway and 20th Street and will include over 2,000 homes. Locals protested at the beginning of the year against the project, which was approved by the city council with a 5-to-1 vote. Residents raised concerns about environmental impacts, particularly the threat of wildfire, as the campfire did burn the area near Honey Run Road. The development's website claims that there will be 700 acres of open space and parks, and 50% of the land will be dedicated to parks, recreation, and conservation. But a local business owner I spoke to is not convinced, and is helping to push a referendum that will stop development. I think that it's, um, it's not really considering what this community is, is all about. Um, the community has not really been involved. Um, in any true way in, in the development of this plan. Um, most of the people in, in town that I've talked to, you know, I've grown up here, don't want to see this happen. So it's just moneyed interests that want this development. Hughes, who has co-owned the bookstore downtown for seven years, said that there are better developments in the city that aren't built in fire hazard areas and address affordable housing that locals can rely on. In Chico, I'm Anwar Stetson for the North States News. Well, the Butte Fire Safe Council needs campfire victims to participate in a study on wildfire recovery. Participants will receive a $50 gift card. Researchers from the University of North, North Texas conducting a study on what exactly wildfire recovery looks like, specifically for victims in Butte, Sonoma, and Lake Counties. Researchers have already finished that first round of study with 20, uh, 20 to 30 participants, but are looking for more residents to participate tomorrow at the Butte Fire Safe Council between 4 and 5 p.m. We spoke to a fire safe council official earlier today. They're really just hoping the folks from the community will show up who are interested in participating. And so it's a really great opportunity. And there are so many people who have a story to share and you know, who would like to take some photos and put those into part of this research log that's being built. And if you're interested in, in participating, go to KRCRTV.com. Wind is not an issue for us just yet, but we are expecting the breezes to pick up. Wind advisory in effect tonight through to, uh, really tomorrow morning, essentially, for Humboldt, for Del Nord, for uh, really most of Trinity as well and part of Mendocino. Uh, ours uh, issues closer by is in the blue, and this is what it looks like. Winter weather, yeah, definitely see winter weather advisory and winter storm watch in effect. But that's from the second system through. Yeah, there's two almost back to back coming through the area. The first one with not as much energy and that's the one that's coming through now. And then the next one in behind this one for the weekend. You can see clouds have been on the increase. At some time it might have looked a little mostly cloudy rather than just partly cloudy as expected because here's that rain coming in once again for the north coast first for tonight. For us it's all about tomorrow morning. That's what we're anticipating and those would be certainly our weather headlines. Clouds on the increase. A breezy conditions, yes, for us. We're going to see the winds will pick up and then Friday through the weekend we have shot at some rain and uh, even some mountain snow and I'll show you the timing of that coming up in your first alert forecast just ahead. All right, thank you, Brian. And the groundhog has spoken. Puxatani Phil saw his shadow this morning. We all know what that means. Six more weeks of winter. According to the legend, Phil considers his shadow an omen of more bad weather to come. Now this woodchuck is no meteorologist, no degree to be had there, but it's a fun tradition said to date back to the 1800s. Phil also doesn't really have the best track record. According to the National Centers for Environmental Information, his predictions have only been right 
but 40% of the time over the past decade. Of course, scientifically speaking, winter officially ends March 20th. We got a lot more coming tonight on the 7 at 7. Look up in the sky. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's a Chinese spy balloon. That's right, we're talking about that and more in What's Trendy. And speaking of sky, let's look live over right in from our house room on Sky Cam. Big changes are coming to the North State, and Brian Schofield is breaking it all down. We don't need a groundhog, we need a meteorologist, and he'll be coming back at us with more in just a bit. Time right now, 708. I'm Dylan Brown, this is your North State News. Right now, we're taking a live look. Chief Photographer Adam McAllister live outside of Reading City Hall. People gathering tonight for what they call the peaceful protest. Now we're calling a celebration after Reading Police Department announced they will be implementing body cameras on some of their officers. The community's response, of course, after the spread of a video of an RPD officer forcefully stepping on the head of a suspect during an arrest. You can see in the signs even them discussing the issue itself. Uh, we, we broke this earlier this week. RPD coming out with the statement itself uh, saying that they had an officer look to be stepping on the head uh, of a suspect as they arrested that individual. We've been seeing this since 6 p.m. or so. They've been out there and still out there going in through the 7 as well. We'll continue to track this and look live and maybe have more tonight at 10 on Fox 11 ABC. And we'll keep you updated both on air and online. Speaking of online, let's go to CaresHereTV.com. Look local real quick. Keep it local and, uh, in case you missed it tonight. Up first in Glynn County. The county's asking for state and federal help to repair infrastructure that was destroyed during the winter storms. Damages from those include erosion, damaged roads, more rural parts of the county. Director of Emergency Services Amy Travis said a lot of damage came from burn scar areas in western Glynn from the August complex. That total cost could be around $6 million. Storms were about five times as damaging as the last major events in 2019 and 17. And in Butte County, a pg and &E employee arrested after being caught stealing equipment, selling ghost guns, and having fentanyl. David Elkinton, who they recognized, had recently been put on leave for stealing a forklift from pg and &E. Officers able to get a search warrant for Elkinton's home. It was near 12,000 story Book Lane. During the search, they found a slew of different illegal items. After searching the home, officials went to different storage units owned by Elkinton. Found more guns, thousands of rounds of ammunition for different weapons. Elkinton taken to Butte County Jail on multiple weapon and drug charges. And in Shasta County, a registered sex offender arrested yesterday morning. Uh, this is after police in Reading found him with a 16-year-old girl. Police first got a call before 6 a.m. saying a man identified as 24-year-old Jagit Kaint was taking pictures of the girl. She's a minor. He's a registered sex offender stemming from charges he got last year. During questioning, though, the victim told detectives Kate was giving her alcohol and marijuana that they'd been hanging out for over a week now. She also told police he had sexually abused her in the past. Kate arrested and booked into jail on several sexual related charges. You can find that story and more. Get all the day's news anytime you want. It's easy to do with our KRCR News Channel 7 News app. Just search KRCR in your device's app store. On that device might be the internet. Let's find out what is trending worldwide tonight. Up first, this one's kind of peculiar. Euphoria star Chloe Cherry officially charged for allegedly stealing a $28 blouse. She seems to be in hot water back in her hometown after getting caught allegedly snatching the blouse. She was charged with a misdemeanor retail theft for an event happened in Pennsylvania in January. Uh, why steal anything but something at uh, $28? Eh. In 2001, though, get this, Winona Ryder stole near, nearly five grand in designer items from Saks Fifth Avenue. Ended up getting charged pretty hard for that. A little more than 28, I'd say. Up first tonight, good old Vanessa Hudgens and her MLB boyfriend, Cole Tucker, just taking their relationship to a whole nother level. They're officially engaged. Exciting. Tucker popping the queue sometime at the end of last year. The couple supposedly was out in Paris in November. Romantic place for something like that to potentially happen, right? The two have been insanely adorable online since they started dating in 2020 during the pandemic. It's February, the month of love, as everyone calls it. Love is definitely in the air for those two. Speaking of in the air, up next tonight, the Chinese spy balloon. Montana, trending for most of the day. The U.S. tracked a suspected Chinese high-altitude surveillance balloon over the U.S. Pentagon has been tracking the balloon now for several days. That's from officials. Videos and pics posted all online showing 
The airspace had to even be shut down at one point there. You can kind of see it. A plane flew near it also. At one point, it goes near the moon. You can see you can definitely make it on that. Everyone wanting a glimpse of that balloon. And here it is. Look at that. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> no one wanted to take that out of the sky. They're worried no. about I mean, it. I would have, yeah, you just pop it down. <laughs> Get a needle and throw it up there. Right. Imagine yeah, the helium, works. how your voice would be after that. Imagine <laughs> that one. Anyway, 49 degrees. We've got uh, weather on the way. We need some more weather balloons, right? Yeah, we do. All right. We don't need weather balloons. We've got a meteorologist. All right. <laughs> Plus, new research showing people are putting off visiting the doctor due to financial stress. How this is leading to a health crisis now. We're coming back with your cover story. Don't wake up. The positive COVID test anymore to get prescribed antiviral drugs. Food and Drug Administration removing that requirement for Paxlovid and others. Bo both drugs approved to treat COVID-19 under emergency use authorizations. The FDA now saying healthcare providers can write prescriptions based on symptom presentation and risk of developing severe COVID-19. It's important because the drugs work best when given early. In some cases, COVID tests don't even return positive results until days after the infection sets in. And medical reporter Liz Bonus is going to share with us what's leading to record high numbers of people delaying much needed medical care. Our cover story of the night. Hey there, everybody. A warning today, as this new survey shows, as many as one in three of us are now putting off health care considered critical to our own survival. It's all because what's coming up in here. We're seeing a lot of people coming in just stressed about their financial situation. Is now keeping us from getting in here. Jennifer Fenwick knows avoiding routine care and intervention can cost you in other ways. When I was in my 20s, I actually got routine pap smears and actually was diagnosed with cervical cancer. This survey found nearly one in four of us are putting off treatment. That's up 12 points from the previous year. One in three say we even put off care when we have a serious medical condition. This is especially true for those with lower incomes, those who are younger and in women. The thing to know, getting sick can cost you time. It took about three or four years for me to clear that and get back to what I felt like was normal health. And money. So Dr. Jonathan Buck says, tell your doctor you're worried about costs and ask what they can do to help at no cost. So no cost ways are certainly screening and screening is one of the best tools that we have in prevention. Dr. Buck says no cost mammograms and free blood pressure checks. Most people don't know what their blood pressure is. You walk in and it's persistently high. Can help you avoid costly hospital stays and even a low cost blood test might get you feeling better fast. I'm able to look at your kidney function and your electrolytes. I'm able to look at your blood counts. You know, if you tell me you're feeling fatigued and run down, is that a because of the world we live in and this fast paced issue? Or, or do you have anemia, which can be some iron deficiency, which will absolutely make you feel that way. One other note, Dr. Buck says this also might be the time to check out a fitness center that offers memberships that are based on a sliding scale income. Those who stay active can cut the number of sick days, even from something such as the common cold, in half. And that's often time off of work or childcare expense that you can avoid. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. All right, switching gears a bit. Now we're getting ready for a little, ready for a little bit of wet weather in our north state. Looking at that radar behind first alert meteorologist Brian Schofield. What are you seeing on that thing, Brian? Seeing a little development now, but uh, not necessarily anything that we're going to get for tonight. That's going to the north coast for tonight, but you can see it's still twisting around. That's uh, kind of round one, I guess you could say, because the next system in comes through for the weekend. So we get a little double dose, and the next one is a little more powerful than this one. But either way, this one here is precision cast to give you an idea what to expect. Uh, yeah, later on tonight, certainly we start to see it push into Eureka. Humboldt Bay, it moves up to Trinidad, then up through Crescent City after hitting Oric and some other areas along the coast. And then once it gets on shore and here, I mean, it's about 4 a.m. before we start to get the likes of it. And uh, then we do see some snow involved. And certainly we're talking about Trinity County snow and then our northern mountains as well. 
and then down to the south through Corning, Chico and Willows, we get some of that wet weather. And then the, the heavy stuff really pushes out. If there is to be said some heavy stuff, some consistent rainfall from it by 8 a.m. And then uh, it's more snow and then leftover from there. And then the latter part of the afternoon and evening, it's uh, long gone. So we get a break even through Saturday morning. We don't see much happening except increasing cloud cover with some breaks. And then here comes the next round. And that's more of an evening event, really area wide for the uh, north coast and just the north state in general. General. As you can see, it gets spotty. We start seeing some uh, showers through the spine of the Sierra and up through Paradise and Chester. And then watch this area wide get some more uh, heavier rainfall, which will actually tip the scales and give us some uh, bigger totals than a quarter of an inch, which is kind of what we're expecting with this first round. And you can see it just pushes on. And then it really lasts through a little bit of Sunday as well before we get the latter half of Sunday uh, without any rain or so. But it's very spotty. But here's what rain estimates are. To so start off with, uh, once again, getting things going. They're really all over the place as far as these totals are concerned. It just depends on who's below that heavier bout. Uh, but then by the second system, watch, here it goes, and it pushes through. And this computer model still not giving us what some of the other computer models are. Other computer models showing uh, over an inch of rainfall with the two systems combined. This one not quite giving that much out. Uh, with the two systems coming through, but still, nevertheless, some good stuff. Give you an idea of what uh, the second one brings. You can see above the 6,000 foot level, you could get uh, beyond two feet of snow. And of course, with the winds checking in, low visibility, some travel troubles as well. So keep that in mind. So some decent snowfall with the cold nature of that system. But overnight tonight, we won't uh, be as cold as this morning. Certainly with all of that cloud cover in the works, you can see those numbers right there. Uh, so we'll pick up some breezes. Start off Friday morning wet, end off the day drier. Uh, start off uh, the morning drier on Saturday, end off the evening wet. And that's just the way it's going to work. And that's your Chico forecast as well. Uh, similar conditions, breezy conditions as well popping into the picture. And then for Sunday, once again, we see some of these showers lingering Sunday morning, but by the afternoon, evening hours, it's long gone. Overnight lows stay in the 30s for a few days, the 40s immediately, but then later on, we start to see 60s pop up in the afternoon with some cool overnights. Back to you. All right, thank you so much, Brian. Well, let's go to entertainment news tonight. Uh, comedian Roy Wood Jr. is going to be featured, the featured entertainer at this year's annual White House Correspondents Association dinner. That's right. The WHCA says Wood uses comedy to shed light on issues in America like race and discrimination. The podcast host has been a correspondent on Comedy Central. It was the Daily Show since back in 2015. White House Correspondents Center, traditionally attended by the President and First Lady, senior government officials, and members of the press corps, scheduled for April 29th. We got a lot more coming tonight on the 7 at 7 a reunion that will bring you to tears. A man reunited with his best friend after he was stolen during a car robbery. Stay with me back. Ultimate hope is that the board simply abides by their policy. We'll have it served, and then uh, we'll be asking uh, that the court take immediate action. Coming up, Gateway Unified School District could see a demand straight from a Shasta County judge. The lawsuit filed today. I spoke with the lawyer behind it all. What comes next for the superintendent search? And more tonight at 10 on Fox 11 on KRCR News Channel 7. All right, let's get to feeling good. I want to feel good. It's your moment of the day. A man and his dog together once again after someone stole his car with his best friend still in the back seat. Take a look. Now they say Specht spent days posting missing dog flyers around the community looking for his English bulldog Ronnie. Parked his car outside of Buckhead CVS store Monday night, went inside for a couple minutes, came back out, both his car and dog gone. Police were able to track down his car, but his dog nowhere to be found. After seeing his story on the news, though, a woman contacted him and let him know she found Ronnie, and the two were eventually reunited. Reunited, and it feels so there good. There it is, yeah. Poor Ronnie. All right, before we go, what do we what do we see in weather-wise today? Well, you might not be biking early in the morning. You, you got to let this rain pass. It's an early morning thing, and but then temperatures stay down as well through the afternoon. So, not like today. All right, rain jacket and all. Be prepared for that. We're coming back at you tonight at 10. The lawsuit filed against Gate at 10. The lawsuit filed.